graduated Carolina in 2012, did my master's at your alma mater at Columbia. Always was passionate about law, but just couldn't figure out the LSAT, you know, like to be honest with you. And um, so right now, I think I made some progress with my prep. Um, I realizing more and more it's a comprehension issue. That's why maybe it's taking me a long time to complete questions. Um, and especially when I time things, the accuracy goes down significantly. Reading comp is just a disaster. LR I'm getting better with and logic games. I'm actually, I have your schedule in front of me. I did, did some of it this morning. It's just a lot of drilling. So want to get your understanding of where do you think I should go with this? And yeah. And also I've been following you for like 10 years. I remember your blog posts from like 10 years ago, the kids you're tutoring now are like 10 years old back then. It's funny, but yeah. Oh, that's so funny. I'm, I'm glad you've been following my stuff for a while. I'm glad you found it useful. I'm glad to finally have the chance to meet with you now. And so I, I want to ask you first, what's your target test date? June, but I could push it back. I took it in April just to take it. Um, but you know, um, June, but I, I might, I, I probably will push it back. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if comprehension's the issue, I think so. So are you speaking reading comp specifically, or is this carrying across to other sections as well? That's a good question. Uh, reading comprehension, definitely an issue. Like sometimes I'll read something and it'll take me time to internalize it. Um, and sometimes I don't even understand what I read. And then after I reread it, I start understanding it. Um, but it takes me a little time to do a little bit of time to do that. And then, and then when I get to the questions, just kind of plug and play. It's a lot easier. My accuracy is way higher, but it's just a comprehension issue. LR, the first 10, 10 questions generally are easier. It's usually like 80 to 100% on that part. But then towards like 16 through 23, my accuracy goes down a lot. So, but as I'm kind of translating, I'm realizing, okay, this is getting easier and easier as I'm breaking this down. But kind of want to get your understanding with how familiar are you with the test? What do you think I should do? Because I, I really, for me, I can say I'm successful. I have my own home, I'm making well above six figures. And if I go to like some school, you know, the opportunity cost is significant for me because a lot of these schools, they don't like, it's either to me, it's like I start at a big law firm or I don't go at all kind of thing. And I want to be guaranteed with like, let's say if I go to a school like UT Austin or like, you know, whatever the Columbia or Northwestern, I'll be guaranteed or a big law job. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's like either I go to a top school or I don't go at all. That's kind of the thing. Gotcha. So I hear what you're saying is that it's got to be a top 14 or equivalent school where it's going to, maximize your chances, N never yeah. guarantees, but maximize your chances of getting that big law six figure job that makes it all worthwhile. And so that means you want that 170 plus. How do you get there? It's by getting the LR questions in 16 to 23. Correct. It's about getting reading comprehension, perfect or very close to it. Not easy to do. Can you do it in le a little less than two months? Maybe, maybe not hard to say. I know that you're working, so you're busy. So you carve out the time you, ha you can, maybe a couple hours a day at most on weekdays and then a bit more on the weekends. But you're getting harder questions wrong because they're hard, especially in the logical reasoning section. For reading comp, maybe there's some strategies to apply as well, though, when it comes to breaking it down in more simpler language, focusing on the structural elements. And the deep dive videos in the course for reading comp focus on exactly that. So I'd encourage you, watch those class recordings, attend the reading comp classes every single week, there's one tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, reading comp deep dive session, going over one reading comprehension passage in depth, breaking it down to the simplest language possible. Uh huh. Dumbing okay. it down. And then walking through the questions associated, helping you highlight the key information you need to focus on. Then for logical reasoning, of course, it's about having a solid understanding of the different question types. And then also making sure that you can review in depth to identify and articulate exactly what your mistakes are and where they're coming from. So the Socratic review method, a lot of the logical reasoning workshops focus on that. I also bring it into the reading comprehension as well. Okay. And I noticed like these are interdisciplinary, the Socratic review method with LR and reading comp, right? Like, Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. It carries across. I mean, it's all about interpreting language and figuring out tempting wrong answer choices unappealing right answer choices. What exactly are the tricks and traps that you're falling for? So slowing it down, not just taking exams after exam, but really focusing on them in depth. Awesome. Awesome. I think that's a good starting point. I'm going to definitely, I'll be honest with you. I've just been so slammed with work. I was just focusing on 
because I've been learning this stuff for such a long time, but I'm realizing there's also gaps in my learning too. So I definitely think that I'll definitely start with your, you know, the structural elements, you know, breaking it down, but I'm going to start looking at your videos, um, you know, in terms of uh, reading comprehension and then, you know, learning more about the Socratic review method and just getting into that mindset. I think that'll help me tremendously. Um, appreciate that. Thank you for that, uh, that direction. I mean, any other, yeah. And, and, you know, it's funny, like, like, so I feel like after I took the April LSAT, I probably got early one fifties, you know, and, and I also left a lot of things blank, but my accurate, I feel like my accuracy is pretty high, but it's just completing those questions on time too. That is, is very difficult. And that goes back to comprehension, I guess. Yeah. So your accuracy is high on what you're getting to. Yes. But there's still a lot more work to be done because you've got to be able to get to everything, which means you're going to have to speed up on some of the easier questions that you're already getting right. But if you speed up on them more, maybe you'll lose some there also. So there's actually quite a bit of work to be done. And I sense your determination. I know that you want to get there, but it's going to be about fundamentally changing the nature of your prep to speed up, get through everything, make some mistakes along the way, and then review those mistakes in depth so that you can see, are you getting easy things wrong because you're giving yourself way more time than you can actually allow or because you actually understand them? Some cases, it'll be one. Some cases, it'll, it'll be the other. But it's not just watching the basic foundational videos to get the simplest understanding and then just take tons of PTs. It's about beyond the theoretical material, the conceptual material where it tells you strengthen questions, ask you to strengthen, use the top three ways to strengthen a question argument. It's a beyond that. You've got to get to the point where you're not just absorbing that simple, those simple breakdowns, but rather changing what you're doing to not just take exams, but to review them in depth, attend the classes where we're reviewing them in depth, and then watch the recordings of all the different previous classes on different question types when you ID weak areas, for example. Awesome. That's really great uh, review. Uh, Direction. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, yeah, I think I definitely do need to change the nature of my prep because I see kids within a couple months, their scores skyrocket. So I'm like, there's definitely something I'm doing wrong here. Um, question to ask you, uh, when are your classes like, because I, I, I got the course, but uh, do I get notifications on when the classes are or? So there's a Google calendar. If you go to the workshops section of the course okay. on, this, on the sidebar, there's yeah. a listing of all the classes happening each week with their specific topics for the coming week. You can also add them to your Google calendar as well to, right. and then you'll get notifications through there, depending on however you set up your Google calendar settings. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Steve. It was an honor finally getting to meet you. I love your passion for the LSAT. It's great. It's funny. You, you could have easily went to Columbia, Harvard, any of those schools, but you just, you know, you decided to stick to, Teaching yeah, I, I kind of got obsessed with this and got sidetracked with it, but I ended up loving it. It's just so much fun to meet with students and get to keep working on the LSAT and help them through their journeys. And so I'm excited to finally have the chance to connect with you and excited for you to start attending the classes. There's classes happening all the time. We have a couple tonight. There's reading comp at 8 p.m. Eastern and there's the group coaching mastermind at 9 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, that's great. And actually that works perfect for me because I, I work, you know, until, you know, a certain time. So really appreciate that. Any other tips, advice, Steve, anything like that or... So right now, I should just focusing on really just quality of understanding and then get to your practice tests and all that later on. I would say, well, it depends on your timeline. It might be that you've got to focus on quality understanding and take practice tests and review. If you go for June, practice tests have got to be part of the mix because you've got less than two months remaining. But if you go for August, you have a bit more time. Maybe you can slow down the pace of the practice test to maybe one a week and you'll have more time for review. It's up to you. So it all depends on your timeline, but taking time, doing time to work and reviewing in depth is going to be a major part of this. And I noticed Steve, you know, um, doing time, doing timed. So do you think, would you recommend doing untimed work or timed work? It's all good. It's all good. It just depends on what your purpose for it is. So maybe doing some timed sections, untimed reviewing them after the fact, mm -hmm. that could be one way to go on it. You could of course, untimed watch the previous class recordings pause them, work through the problems, watch the review process that was conducted in the class. And then of course you can attend live as well every week. There's tons of stuff going on. We have something virtually every single day now. Wow. And is it you teaching it or just like different like people under you? I'm teaching some, I've got a team of instructors and teaching assistants as well though. 
Wow, you're doing well for yourself. Awesome. Uh, that's great. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, now, yeah, I mean, I think this was really, really helpful. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, and also, I know with the LSAT Flex, that's going to be done after they're going to have an experimental section. So it's like, okay, if I'm going to do something, I got to do it now, you know, if that makes sense. So um, because they're going to have an extra section. And also next year, it's actually going to be very competitive from what I heard, because like, there's actually X amount of more people with 170 plus on their LSAT because the test is shorter. So, you know, I might wait like a, another year or two and just like really work my way up in corporate America before I make that attempt. But I have time, I guess. No, you've got time. I mean, you're not in a rush, which is good. You don't want to be in a rush for this sort of thing, especially when there's the opportunity cost and such. But if you felt you could achieve your fullest potential by June, sure, go for June. That way you do get to take the flex format only three sections. Alternatively, if you end up taking August or beyond, it'll have that experimental back in the mix, which nobody ever wants to do, of course. But with the additional two months of prep, you could outweigh that and still get a higher score on the August LSAT. So I wouldn't rush to do June if you weren't ready. But if you were ready, yeah, of course I would take it. This cycle, the one that's just kind of finishing up now, has been super competitive because of the higher scores and also because of COVID leading people to go to law school. That'll probably happen again next cycle as well, of course. But whenever you're ready for the LSAT, take it, lock in your score. Then you can choose when to apply based on when you think makes sense for you. I love it. Thank you for that, Steve. Um, actually, you're making me realize, you know what, just better just getting the test down than rather than trying to rush and get to the June LSAT. You know, and also by that time, if I have an extra two months, presumably I'll increase so exponentially that, you know, it's what is an extra section going to mean? Is, is there going to be a difference with the experimental section? Is it, I heard it's typically harder. I mean, or that's from what I've, my experience, but maybe is there any difference or no? Or do we even know what it is? No, right? You won't, you won't know what it is. It probably won't be easy to tell during. Occasionally they can seem a little bit weird in some way, but usually it's mostly just that there's the ratio of easy to difficult questions could be a little bit off, but it's going to be so subtle. You wouldn't notice it. Typically, I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on that. I would just do it. It's going to be one of games, reasoning, or reading comp. It could be any of the four sections. But I wouldn't give it much thought other than that test is going to be a little bit longer and you're doing more work than you would ideally need to do. Great. I know you have a, a limited time. Um, one last question, um, and that was really helpful. What book would you recommend for me to become a better reader, think more critically about things? And, you know, because I've done my research about that, but I want to get like, is there anything out there you think you would recommend or like, do you think, yeah, that would help me, I guess, in some ways? The best material is honestly just the actual LSAT exams. Yeah. I mean, read, there's over 400, there's like something like 400 reading comp passages. Yeah. So that's plenty of material. You do those passages, you do the associated questions, you make some mistakes, you learn along the way. I would stick with the actual LSAT exam since you're not going to have enough time to cover all of them, most likely. Alternatively, there is one book I think is pretty good. It's very short. It's called a, a rule book for arguments. I have that book. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got it from you. I got it from you. Oh, it's right here. Uh, it's somewhere here. Yeah. Yeah. The little That's small fantastic. Book. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a very small book, very short. It's a, it's a great overview of argumentation and logical reasoning. And so I, I would look at that. Well, uh, thank you so much, Steve. Really appreciate your coaching. I guess, uh, yeah, appreciate the confidence. And yeah, I really have nothing else for you. And uh, thank you so much. My appreciate pleasure. It. Of course, I'll see you in class later. See ya. Thank you, Steve. Have a good one. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.